expert on this computer. Okay, good afternoon to uh, everybody listening. Uh, thanks for stopping by and good evening to the UK. I have again a, a chance to interview um, who's coming, uh, becoming a good friend, Annette Williamson. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about the message that she has been, she and her friend have been receiving for a couple of years. Um, I first heard Annette, uh, to give a little background for people who haven't seen the first video that we did, uh, I first met Annette when she contacted me by Facebook. We had a couple of little exchanges back and forth. I really didn't realize the, the significance of what she was talking about. And then she, uh, Annette appeared on a podcast in the United Kingdom by Joe Wood, who uh, is associated with the Rolling Stones. And when I heard that interview, I said, who is this woman? And I started looking around and I found out that we were friends on Facebook and that we'd actually exchanged um, messages. Uh, the reason I'm doing a second and we'll probably do a third and a fourth interview is when I heard what she was talking about, I knew instinctively that the message she's getting is the message uh, that most of the experiences are getting. So I thought it was very important. And today, uh, Annette is going to join me and we're going to go through uh, some of the drawings that she's done. She has drawn a lot of this uh, material. And so we're going to flip through some of her uh, photos. We'll go here for an hour. We'll see what we get through and um, you'll get a little bit more about what this message is. And as I emphasize, I believe this is the message. This is um, coming from source or coming from um, the place that other people, because it's the same message that a lot of experiences are getting. So uh, good, af good, e good afternoon, I guess it is, Annette in um, London, England. Thanks it's for uh, joining up with me. It is good evening. You're right, the first time. Oh yeah, that's right. It is evening. Yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. Six, about 6.30 there. Yeah, it's just past 6.30, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for showing up with me again and, and being willing to um, share the, the message, the story. So just for people who didn't watch the first, give it just a little, you know, two, three minute background of how you encounter these um, beings. And then we'll start going through some of the drawings that you did um, to uh, sort of point out what they were, what the messages they're telling you. Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, it was on the 18th of October, 2017. A friend of mine um, they first showed the weekend prior to that two days before that to her um, that morning I saw a little picture that she'd put up of a being with a large head and a small body and I contacted her and asked if I could go around I had sort of an, a, a definite call to go there and um, I went there and as we were speaking three beings turned up um, she sees them in her contract, she was meant to see them. And in my contract, linked with her contracts to, together, I, I or had told them I didn't want to see them and I would experience them in other ways. So, and um, both of us have been, since then, um, talking with them daily. She still sees them, I still don't see them. I still get other ways that I feel them and they, they talk telepathically. Um, yeah, so um, I've been sharing the messages over the last two years, slowly, slowly, slowly sort of sharing the messages. It's, it's, it's very new to me. So I don't know anybody in the field apart from a few people that I may have contacted yourself. <laughs> um, but no, not many people at all. Um, so it, I, it, I, am, I am still myself in it thinking, wow, every day. I'm still like that. Um, yeah, so that's a sort of a bit back up. Yeah. So we, we got the first drawing here you did of the beings. Now, of course, the weirdest part about it is they have no faces. And so can you sort of describe how you came to envision the beings? And uh, was it from Zoe's description? Or can you describe what these beings are and sort of describe them as best you can as to what the image is? Because it's really not their image, is it? It, it? They just are projecting this image to you, correct? Yeah, yeah. and it. That, and to be fair, that's not my picture. I asked Zoe. Oh, Zoe draw, drew this. Drew, yeah, she drew oh, it. Okay, for me. I didn't know that. Good. Yeah, uh, she drew it for me because after a first, uh, maybe it was probably maybe only about the first seven days, um, they'd already um, 
they'd already, you know, um, told to us about uh, different people, energies, souls, we call them humans in forms, contracts. So, and um, I, they'd said that she was seeing them and that I, and I knew I wasn't seeing them and I knew that I wouldn't be the sort of character that could see them. Um, so I asked her to draw them one afternoon while they were there and um, she drew them. And, and uh, to be honest with you, as you're looking at them now, I was sitting actually directly opposite them, although I couldn't see them. And she was sort of sitting to the side and she was drawing. And then, um, yeah, and then once I had a visual like that, that visual just stayed with me forever. But you're right, they have no, no physical like eyes, mouths like that. No, it was what you said it was. It's a projection that she saw. Okay, and are you both getting it telepathically or? Is there, there's no voice or anything like that to Zoe. It's coming no, she, telepathically. Yeah, telepathically. They don't. They don't. There's no mouth speaking. Yes, yeah, she, she, they see. She sees them, and she'll talk to them in mind, and they'll answer straight away in mind. But there's no mouth moving. And with me, I don't see them, but I feel. I start to feel differently. I start to get, um, like my energy around me. I can sense it's changing, um, and then. The reason why I can confidently say that they're talking to both of us at the same time is that during the first three months when they first um, showed in form, if you like, um, they would speak to us during the day um, separately and I would be writing it down because I wrote everything down in the first three months. So they would be saying something to me and then um, Zoe, I wouldn't have spoken to her maybe for 24 hours and they would be doing something with her. And then if we caught up that evening, um, I'd say, oh, you know, the beans have been around today. And she'll say, oh yeah, yeah, they've been around today. And I might say, they've been talking about this. And she'll go, oh my goodness, that's exactly. And then she'll explain to me literally sometimes word for word what they had been given to me telepathically without physically seeing them. And that happened constantly. That three month period at the beginning was very, very, very intense. And I think it was for purposes, literally to change our frequencies, especially for me, because Zoe had physical sight. She could see them. I, I wasn't seeing them. I was getting them other ways. So they had to kind of reinstate and reinforce the different ways of which they communicate with me without me actually seeing them standing in front of me talking to me. Yeah, so that's that picture. Hello. Uh, can you explain to me, sorry, I, I cut off my audio. Can you explain to me um, how they describe themselves and how long they've been here and that sort of thing? Yeah, um, they said that um, they have been here for, uh, what they, I'll start at the beginning. They actually said that humans and other beings created this illusion earth altogether it was something we all created they used to call it a never-ending story um and they said that they've been around for billions and billions of billions of what were well, they never used the word they used the word years but they'd already explained to us there's no time it was just a way to explain what they wanted to explain at that time so they said, we've been around for billions and billions and billions and billions of years. We've come to humans in um, various different forms, um, uh, angels, spirits, um, aliens. I mean, I'm sure there's other, many other different forms that I, I don't even know about and they haven't yeah. explained it. They gave me what I needed. Um, and they said that, um, they said it's like cycles we go into these cycles and um they come every now and then just to they literally said to give to humans back what they forget while they're doing you know while they're in this illusion but they also used to say to us how how you know beautiful this illusion is and that um that it's gone through all these different changes and 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 um Lot, you know lots of things like that it's, it's constantly changing they said energy is always changing form nothing stays the same wow. and they put that across everything it's not just just when you think about energy thinking about one little pocket it's yeah. like everything is energy everything is connected everything is alive so it's always changing form and, and we experiencing our reality 
um, or a constantly changing form with it. Yeah, and, and I think that's important to note is that what you're putting out is uh, basically what you're starting to hear in some sort of scientific circles is this idea that time, space, uh, maybe illusions, that the physical world is an illusion, um, that it's all just uh, our perception. And that's why I think it was so important that that's basically a message you're getting, which uh, coincides with sort of leading edge um, theoretical people looking at, you know, maybe there is really no physical world and time and space and this sort of thing. Yeah, well, the, the, the billion said there's no planets. There, you know, they said that the Earth has no shape. Um, the, the planets we perceive as shape, but they aren't shape. And they sort of described it, they kind of described it, um, uh, there is a picture, we'll go to it, because there is pictures that will go on to this, but they, okay. just, they kind of described it um, like this uh, energy, and that the energy takes all these different forms. And then when it's in this form that we're in now, this human form, um, we each have our own realities. And, and we experience our own realities. And they said that they they actually said the truth is there is no real truth. The only truth is what you will experience with your first eye in the now, literally meaning this moment, because they, there is no time doesn't go anywhere. It, it, it doesn't move as we see it move. It, 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 it's different. It's dimensions. It's only dimensions. And as I said, the only thing that you really travels is the consciousness. Oh, this is a good one. This one. Okay. This one. okay so let's let's explain this one. This these are your drawings now. They're on my desktop. Right. Uh, so so I, go go through this one here. Right. So this is one I drew um, after a conversation because the beings, the entire three months, first three months, where they were around literally twenty four seven, and it was so intense. Um, they constantly spoke about death all the time. It was all they spoke about. And literally every other conversation would have been something to do with, um, the, they never used to use the word, well, they would at first trying to tell us over and over, but in the end they just said, um, you know, they, I remember one day they were literally having a conversation about it and they said, if you humans like, you're already dead. There's no difference between dead and, and, and being alive. It's, it's a perception of it only. Wow. And that, when they said that to us, we both got it, literally, like, and it had been going around for a couple of days in conversations, and when they said that, it was just like, bang, okay, I understand now, so. So this was like a sort of interpretation of that, because if you look, we start in this little path here, yeah. and where we get released, we think that's the end, but that, that just takes us, there is no end, it, it, there is no end and no beginning, it's just, it just is now. But we have many nows happening in many dimensions. This was just to more or less explain the fact that life and death is just cycles and that's it's just forever cycles. Um, I did ask them if we, um, I remember having a conversation and I asked them if uh, us humans as energies, um, do we, when we pass or, uh, you know, do we constantly come back with the same other energies? Do we experience re reincarnation with the same energy, uh, how does that work? And they, they explained it and they said that um, there are, obviously there are gonna be some energies that have in contracts chosen to spend their, their realities together in this illusion. And, and there will be contracts that just come in and um, for some, they'll come in for some reason and you'll meet them and you might spend some time together and you go and they might just come into Give you a message or to i mean you might not feel it at that message but you might not even know what the message is but you know you sort of you come in and go out and come in and go out and i said so do, does that happen in every reincarnation and they actually they started laughing at me and they said um they said of course it does he said of course you're going to have the same energies each time but you're also going to emit new energies on every reincarnation because it will all depend on what your energy wants to experience next time. But we reincarnate, um, they said we can go to animals, we can go to not just humans, and it can be instantaneously, we can literally, literally pass one second, come back the next second. It's, it's that quick. 
wow. it's you know there's no waiting room there it's like that it's it's everything's everything is already there before we actually live our lives it's all we all know it all everything's inside us for what we're going to experience but wow. we forget it as we're meant to but it's all coming back now that's what they're changing all that's getting brought yeah. up to the surface again let me give you a little bit of support in this um, notion. As I said, this matches a lot of what experiencers are saying, and that's what I basically study as experiencers. If you look at the free survey, which was started by Edgar Mitchell and Ray Hernandez, they did 3,200 experiencers, and in that survey, 26% of the experiencers claimed that they were talked to about reincarnation. I think it was 75% of all experiencers believe reincarnation is a part of it. And another uh, two things that sort of fit into this, if you take a lot of experiencers who claim to have been on the ship, they will describe um, dead people on the ship that they knew. And they said they were like flesh and blood people, and they were people who were supposed to be dead that were on the ship. And the other one was um, the very famous Whitley Strieber, who wrote a number of books, Communion being the, the prime one, on UFO experiences that he had since 19, I think it was 86. Um, said that when he first did his first book, there was no internet, and they had... Um, uh, I think 200,000 plus letters came in from the book, from people t telling about their experiences. And he said his wife was helping edit these books and uh, these letters and reading them. And at one point she came out of the room uh, and she said, Whitley, whatever we're dealing with here has something to do with death. And oh, yeah. she got that from the letter. So it gives you some support that, that's why I'm saying this message is a message that is going across the board. This is the, the beings that you're dealing with are putting out the same message and that's why I thought it was so important that we get your verification us. So let's go to the next photo here. Let me get this done. Can I just, while I've got remembering something with this, can okay. I just Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Sure. Mind, yeah. Because um I don't think in the last interview I ever talked about other people's experiences with other beings. And uh what the beings explained about that is that that each contract will have their own experience like you said of of a being and um and so when you say things like that i just think in, as soon as you start talking about other people's experiences they have i just think oh that's you know they've had this this is their contract and that's the most you know it's amazing really when when you think about what we are going through and an experiencing with it but each of us has literally designed our own contract so yep. So, so we get we get to the soul contract, which is a, a sort of a disputed thing in the UFO field, where people will say, "Oh, they took me against my will." I mean, um, I'm a victim, and right. you go but, back to yeah, the idea of the soul contract that you have to take responsibility for whatever it is you're experiencing. Correct? Right. And the other thing is, you've got we've got to remember, and this is really important. I feel what we experience in our day-to-day -day reality right we sit and watch television all day long about people getting killed all, all horrendous stuff i mean fictional stuff films we sit and we sit and watch that for enjoyment yeah yeah and then we wonder why it's happening in our streets and even happening in our um other being alien encounters they sort of flow if you after um after the oh this is a good one that flows quite well into it then so <laughs> after the um let's say the second world war a lot of the experiences seemed to be very fighting and lots of ex you know it was all like the war it was like what we were experiencing down here we experience in the illusion in our other dimensions so when we can get to the point where we are not you know, the being said a little while ago, humans uh, still enjoy death, meaning um, not so much they enjoy death, but we like, to, you know, we'll sit and watch it on the telly while we're eating our dinner and think there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You, we've got, you know, we've got to this point where it's a different thought of death and, and death, what they call death is nothing like we see death, what we're taught. In fact, I've taught, I don't think death should be in our vocabulary. Okay. There's nothing in anything around us that dies. It only changes form. So, beautiful. beautiful. Right, so this one is this one was a kind of um, uh, so this one was when they were talk because they the being said that they talk to all humans. Okay. Every single human because we're all oneness in consciousness and they said that there is only layers of layers of consciousness. That's all there is. That's all there is. 
So, and it, they sort of explained it like, uh, they said it's like a giant spider's web. It's all slightly, it's all interlinked. So um, they give thoughts because they can give thoughts and when they give thoughts and they come in daydreams and, and deep sleep dreams and, and, and also self because you're connected to them. So if you're meant to have a sort of an experience with the beings in some way or whatever you've kind of, you know, connected and uh, for self, um, they'll put that thought in your mind ready for you to be in the place for it to happen. Right. So, and, and it goes across the boards and I've, since the beings, I can't stop watching movies and, and listening to music. And every time I listen to music now, I laugh because I think, ah, I know that's, I know where that's come from. Wow. And I know, you know, I can see the, the inspiration and, it, and you can see the link, how it all sort of con literally trickles out through consciousness. And especially with DJs and people with music and artists and, and everything, it's all connected. It's everything is connected. And, and I just, uh, I was listening to music one day and I had the vision of them just literally listening to the music with me, through me, because they experience everything through the oneness of the vibrations and emotions and frequency. Wow. So um, I just had this vision of them tapping their toes and sort of getting on down yeah. <laughs> with me while I, was, while I was listening to music. And it was so strong that I drew that picture and it just made me chuckle. Wow. So. Let, let me ask you, um, but let me first sort of back up and give you some more support for your story. Uh, yesterday, uh, Sinead and I, we did an interview last evening, uh, which had to do with uh, music synchronicity. Just, I won't get into it, but it's just re I was one of these things where you go like, nobody's going to believe this happened. There's, there's no way anybody's going to believe this. It was just really weird. It had to do with reggae music. Uh, but did you ever directly ask the beings about music? Because I wrote a book called Tuned In. The paranormal world of music and i talk about how many um uh, people are experiencing like john lennon uh, uh, quite a few major musicians have had very direct ufo encounters did you actually uh, no. directly address them about music about whether they're using music for to put oh, i know they are out? i didn't have to they'd already explained how that connection works because they said they'd come they come to all humans in daydreaming deep sleep dreaming and all humans connect into consciousness and it's like, um, so while you were speaking, saying you had this, I can't say the words because I can't, because of my dyslexia, seriously, yeah. what the word is, where you're both doing it at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I was getting is that's happening repeatedly in many people's illusions. E each, each, you know, each energy's reality is, there's going to be a lot of that going on. There's got a lot of that going on because... <clears throat> We think we've gotten a number of humans. We think we know exactly how many humans are on this planet and everything like that. And we really haven't got a clue. Yeah. We haven't got a clue how many humans are actually experiencing these realities and these dimensions. Beautiful. You, you have a problem with the word uh, synchronicity. I have the problem, problem with the word dyslexia. So <laughs> maybe give, a, give it a sort of a try as to, do you think there's some connection because both you and Zoe have, uh, suffer from dyslexia? Do you think that has something to do with why you're able to tap into this, whereas somebody else might really not be able to pick up their message? I don't think it's actually so much like that because I think um, if a, if an energy is come to, into this illusion and they're going to experience something, it, they're going to experience it as simple as that. Um, so I think when we ask them about dyslexia, I think because how the, the brain works and it's all different in individual, everybody's individual differences, um, I think that they will... I think they've already said that um, dyslexia, dyspraxia, um, lots of labels, they said that they're going to start, you know, viewing themselves differently, which then is going to come out in reality, which is going to change this shift. And there's going to be lots of, you know, the way we uh, interact with each other and the way we have, actually, we've got no respect for anybody at the moment. It's, it's outrageous. Um, so and the, and all that's going to change all that is what's changing Beautiful. it's that conscious levels being brought up but not only by people looking in that will see it by the individual energy experiencing it so it will come from self it will come from them they'll experience it and, and remember when i'm saying from self what i'm actually explaining is the beings are giving you an idea and it's connecting because it's already there because it's already okay. a story that's wrote before we got here 
Okay. And then it's like, okay, yeah, gut feeling, that sounds good, let's go. Okay, right, beautiful. Right, let's and go this to this one. next one here. What's this about? Right, this is when they explained the fact that there was no time. <laughs> and they said um, that, you know, time is a man-made wor word for something you don't understand. Yeah. And they said um, that uh, what there is, is multi-dimensions. And what they're doing is they're all happening now. So we're, we're lots of places all at once. And, but, you know, and, and that actually led very well into people with slight bipolar and schizophrenic because I, I have a friend who was bipolar and schizophrenic and I, um, I was a life coach back then. And I, so I lived and worked with her and worked through it. And what I had uh, actually saw, this is way before the beards, yeah. is how she operated when she went into her bipolar moment. So her bipolar episode could last three months in that time it was like she was experiencing every part of her life every day. One minute she could be 16, the next day it, she could be 32, the next day she could be 27, she'd be all in. And she, some of it was memory. Uh, anyway, but when, I, when the beings came and explained to me about different ways that the brain works, and they kind of showed me her as an, not an example, but I brought her up. And I said, so I understand now that someone, let's say, that would have, uh, which be classed as we would say, oh, they're schizophrenic or they've got, you know, they're in gala or whatever. What they're actually, what that energy is actually doing is that energy is chosen to live in this reality, but remember all of the other dimensions at the same time in the now. Whereas oh, we, we don't do that. We just have our now. Yeah. We just have our now. And that is a personal choice for them to come down and experience like that. And what we need to do is accept that and work with that and not try to medicate it and give it all names and that. But I can't go into that. That's just my personal view about the medication. I can't say the being said, don't medicate. Yeah. They, didn't, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say that. So, but I just got that from, I got that from what they were saying. And then I understood when they said that that the shift how it hit these new, uh, these new energies that are coming to experience the reality, uh, they will be different and they will, uh, they, they will have a different understanding of their self and everybody and everything around them. So they will help do the change as well. Um, but these, yeah, this is a picture just to say everything is happening now. Theme park, I called it theme park because it's all in, in self. And, you know, I, I asked them about, um, different times and um they just kept saying it hasn't gone anywhere you know it's just because you can't see it doesn't mean to say it's not there yeah they mentioned atlantis right that you could add yeah, because i asked them if i could go <laughs> i remember asking when they were asking about trying to explain to me time yeah um and i sort of was talking i said something about atlantis that I like and they said atlantis hasn't gone anywhere it's still there it's just that you can't see it and that really was the first opening conversation for me to start then understanding about where there is no time and uh, we are just multidimensional beings, literally in a multidimensional illusion that we're, we're, we've put all these labels on to explain, but it will eventually filter out. Yeah. I, to give you a little bit more support, this is now a very common idea that, that everything is happening here now. It's like Bashar, the great channeler said, you know, it's here, it's now, it's always now. And the idea that it's a deck of cards, that all your lives are stacked like a deck of cards on top of each other. But I was, I was with Barbara Lamb, who's one of the top regressionists, and she told me the story where I sort of understood the idea that, that it's all now. Because uh, it's hard to wrap your head around that. And she it talked is. about when she has people who are on board the ship and they're panicking, they're on the table and they're, they're, they're panicking. She always tries to distract them. So she says, do you know what they're doing to you? And then the person goes, no, I don't know what they're doing to me. Do you want to know? Yeah. Well, why don't you ask the being? And then there'd just be a long pause and then they'll say, oh, they tell me there's something wrong with my kidney. I should have my ch kidney checked. And so true, yeah. You and, can and ask that Yeah, that didn't happen in the first version. She, they didn't ask the being, but you can actually go back to the event and ask questions and change the event. And it, you would think it's it, carved in stone, but it's not. It's all, it's all one thing that you can move around in time and yeah. space and, right. and interact. That's right. Well, they sent a message once and they said, does humans know you can even change the paths if you choose to? Yeah, yeah. And I thought, oh, I remember I was trying to talk to people about it. 
Uh, this one, uh, okay, this one was me at the very beginning when, they, when, I, when I was trying to explain to my friend who's a Christian that there was no one God. Oh, wow. And he certainly wouldn't look like a man. <laughs> and this, so this was in the first few few days of me literally like being gobsmacked by the beings and it was and I, I still didn't really understand what I was saying apart from they just kept saying you know all humans are divine if you like all humans are god if you like when they were you know in the first few weeks when they were trying to break it down to me so that I could sort of understand what 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 and then and this is like all the multi dimensions and that we're all together Wow. Again, that's a very common thing that we're starting to understand that that's probably going to be true. If it, it just, it just fascinates me that, uh, let me, let me ask you a question sort of related to this. I mean, did you have any sort of um, study of philosophy or this kind of stuff or ex UFO experiences before the beings or because you, you're, this stuff is so advanced in terms of, of um, the, the material you've got. It's almost like you've been studying this your whole life. You're sort of like very, very wise in terms of understanding these concepts that, that, that are starting to come out now. Yeah, um, I've been searching for them, I think internally. So I remember that at age 20, I started, you know, why are we here? What's it all about? Okay. That question. And then I remember looking into the Christian church a little bit and I started questioning all that. Then I, I literally, yeah, I, I went into, uh, I'm dyslexic, so I can't really read a lot, but I would watch documentaries and my dad was quite knowledgeable on all things like that. Okay. So I could ask him questions. So I'd already sort of established by the time that the beings had got here that I had felt that I believed in some sort of reincarnation, but I didn't know what. Um, I felt that there was something more, my dad used to work with NASA and he had an interest in UFOs, although that really wasn't pulling me at that point. It was more, I didn't think they would be the answer to why we're here, basically. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I sort of listened, but not listened. And then, um, but my dad used to be into, into about the last sort of six years of, before he passed, he was really into uh, Zachariah Sitchin. Okay. And, um, so he used to read loads and loads and loads and loads of books like that. In fact, uh, loads and loads of books. And um, he said, I started watching a few shows about that. But I do remember when the beings came, the only question I asked them sort of towards that was the fact I asked them, uh, sorry, I thought that was my phone was off. Um, I asked them if, um, I asked them if the Anunnaki would come back. And they, uh, they said, do you want them to? And it literally freaked me out. And, I, uh, and before I'd finished, they just said, um, they came to Earth and experienced it, but left not having the same attachments to Earth as humans. Uh, and they can't come back because energy is always changing form. Okay. But I understood what they meant because that was just a very short period in this uh, uh, you know dimension or time period or whatever that we all kind of experienced but there was lots before that okay. because nothing's gone anywhere so it we're constantly in this state of multi-dimensions I, I can't it's hard to explain this one was the fact that um this picture again was to do with that uh, it doesn't they were saying that all these realities that are born all over this these dimensions what we call earth but they're literally pockets of realities um, have all chosen where they want to be and what they want to be and what they want to experience because they said before uh, an energy comes to uh, this illusion uh, it it wants to experience emotion it doesn't understand it, it doesn't know what is a good emotion from a bad emotion okay so it's just emotion and that's what the effect is that on the body so um it's quite hard to describe to somebody that there is no negative or positive because that's really what they were saying. They said there's no night, there's no day. It's, it's all perception of consciousness. And what would be the, the, their um, explanation of why, why we live? Is it for just to experience, to um, be happy or wh what's the ultimate purpose of life? I think it's to experience because they kept cool you know the way they explained this the illusion that we're in it's something we all want it. it's not just us not humans i mean all beings 
not just uh, it's it's we come in with you know some of us are human some of us come in being some of us are come in different shapes and forms and sizes but effectively we're all one and we're all we, it's a story they said it's just a story it's a story that we all decided to take part in uh, they said no one is without anybody else um, you know, this is a forever long, forever lasting story and, and it cycles. Um, I didn't say to them, why did we do it? Why did we start it all off in the first place? Because I think it's all about experience. It's like a theme park. It's like going to a theme park and experiencing different rides. Um, they did say at one point that humans don't need to know all the ins and outs about oneness. And, and I remember there were certain times that I felt I, I could ask questions, but there were so many questions I wanted to ask. And then when I felt that I was ready to ask them, I decided for some reason not to ask it. And I just thought, I feel that it will come out in time and that I don't need to ask all the questions, find all the questions. Uh, this picture you're putting up now, this was about two weeks after the beings had turned up because I had other experiences apart from tele telepathic conversations. I had other things going on. I had something, I don't know, was it put in my back or there's something in my nervous system that I, when they, two weeks after they came, this is to do with the dream and um, the beings had already said to me that uh, uh, they, I'd, I'd opened a portal. That's what they had said. Oh. And I remember thinking, oh, I don't remember any of that. But then when I thought about it in meditation, I thought, ah, I kind of remember a little bit of a dream. I remember, I remember sort of sitting up in my dream and I can remember then sort of touching this very bright area with my finger and being in this immense brightness. And then um, that's when it came and I thought, I do remember that. And I wrote that, that was the picture then that came i do remember that but I, I never asked them what a portal what portal or, or anything i was too in a state of constant the constant conversations that were just going bang 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 i think i was in a state of constant shock i, I don't know if it's <laughs> shock or change of frequency but if i was talking in human terms i would say i felt like i got run over by a lorry every day wow you'll you have to ask about the portal i'm fascinated with portals it's a big um sort of thing in terms of how do how do they come in how do they go out like how do they come into our awareness and then sort of leave and this this portal idea that they um you open up sort of a gateway and you make contact it's almost like the contact modality idea but fascinating that they that they would sort of explain it to you like that yeah well they also said that they did explain about the penal gland as well and they said that uh, all consciousness is in in the penal gland and that uh, you know that we should if we try visualizing going through the penal glands and relaxing and then all literally all those thoughts that we have in our minds are they are coming from them that's what they're saying they're, it's it's a two-way thing oh yeah this is the contract okay good. This, this, this is this is one of the pictures i did when they were explaining the contract and they said it's your contract so i i kind of had all these bubbles up here as all the energies and then they you know, I made sort of a jokey thing, right? You do, you know, you see, design what you want to be, what you're going to experience. And the next minute you go down and then you're in womb because they said, you know, womb, uh, womb is atom and it's connected to consciousness and that some uh, energies just want to experience womb. Yeah, so down here I've got theme park planet Earth because you can go where you want because it's all happening. You can go to Atlantis, you can go into the future, you can go somewhere in the past, you can be in the present. <laughs> It's all going on and then it's all going on at multi dimensions which i put up here all at the same time wow and i just put to all souls you know i, put, I think i put some funny little comments remember to stay safe on earth am i added on bits have they given you any sort of interpretation or any sort of insight as to past lives that you had no okay and and, and i haven't asked yeah and i'm not really in, i wasn't interested before but because they constantly made a point of saying it's the only what you experience now, whatever I'm right now, what I'm talking to you right now, this to me is it. And then, but I already know I've, uh, I know I must have done a few times. Um, they said that Zoe and I used to, uh, used to play together as children. She remembered it. I didn't, but I think a lot of, uh, my experiences, uh, I've chosen to forget. 
No. And I think no. that um, I choose, to, and even more so now, I'm quite happy about forgetting things if I haven't wrote it down, because I think, oh, well, it's gone now anyway. So if it's going to come back up, it'll come back up. And it, you know, sort of like that. So, and this one is you, your reality, because they said you can change your reality at any time because we're going in, you know, they said that we're all going to have a change of reality soon. There's going to be in, in this new three generations, the, these new energies, if you like, that are coming to experience, which are all us. Remember, it could be us again, coming back to experience it again. So as much as people, uh, I did actually say this the other day to a friend about recycling and I said, uh, even if you don't want to recycle for anybody else, you can recycle for yourself because it's you that's going to come back to experience it. Right. So do it for self if you don't want to do it for anybody else. Right on. Beautiful. <laughs> but this reality, yeah, they said you choose your realities, you create your realities. You can, we have constantly, they said that they, we're all, we come to crossroads in our life and they are always talking to us and they're always giving us plan A or plan B. Um, but, either a or b it doesn't matter which road you take a or b there is no wrong road it's just different experiences and outcomes but there is a slight element of um they said there is nothing that isn't predetermined yeah they said there is nothing that's not predetermined predetermined right wow. So it's like we're we're in energy form and we've literally got a, you know our life plan and we've sorted out all the areas and everything and we've ticked off all the corners who we're going to meet all the way through right right to the end yep. and then we start the whole lot again and 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 they come in and they'll do their bit whatever they've got to be or it's it's just one big like oneness that's the only way to describe it yep. so they said yeah we create our own reality so that's where this picture sort of uh, uh, and they also said to heal the division because they said that they'd come um to reconnect remember and heal the, the division and i kind of had an element in this picture with the sewing because it's like healing we've got you know but again it, it's coming it'll come so if, if somebody were to say i don't like my reality how would you or the beings tell them to change their reality and is there okay. a process go ahead well, it's not really you don't you, you it's small like more small steps isn't it you can't how would you change your reality? Your reality is what you live on a day-to-day -day basis. So whatever you want to have, and, and it's got to be your perception of what you want. Because you might say, oh yeah, my reality is I want to be really, really rich. But being really, really rich doesn't change the emotions that you're going to experience as a human going through the stages. It, money doesn't really, money again is man-made. And they said that we're going to evolve and we're going to be coming to this stage where we're coming to love and share and where, uh, we won't have money in this. It's not going to be on money. It's going to be something else. Right. And uh, we've done it before and we're going to do it again. And it's, it's evolving. And you know, we are going to have, that's what's coming. It's, it's not going to be always like this. This is when they were trying to explain the fact, uh, which they did do very well, that uh, there's beauty in dark, the same as light. They said, you know, yin, yang, one can't be without the other. It's always got to be balanced. And that humans need to love dark like they love light because it's perception and once you can understand the perception that you can then lose fear you see what i mean with well, that fear what, how does fear play into it because that that seems to be a big thing that i hear a lot of beings talking about is the idea of overcoming fear and the fear is the sort of the opposite of love and this sort of things yeah, but it's not. It's, there's no opposite of anything. It's it's just all love. So again, it's our perception. But the absence of love would be if you didn't if you didn't have the love, you would have you would go into a fear state, correct? I mean, it's it's all the same thing. But I've been I've been in fear state. I've had that. I've had uh, and like other people, I, I've I've been in. Um, I haven't had a great. You know, what, run, don't think that I'm sitting here saying, oh, you know, it's all perfect. Life can change. Right? Never. I've lived. The other realities I've had, I've had lots of what we wouldn't say unpleasant situations and all that. I've had those in my life now. Have they, uh, have they given I, any predictions for the future in terms of like sometimes you hear about the warning that you know we should change this or that? Or they give you anything like that? Change what in what way do you mean? Well, you know, you get these things about you know we're destroying the planet and um, you know, they said, what do you think happens if humans can only love their own? 
meaning you know we can't love animals we can't uh if you know things like that uh they said that everything is in cycles and um, with a cycle, that means if something, uh, what we would class, let's say something we would say has died, or they would say it's, it, it leaves room for growth, for room to grow in some other way. There's nothing to do with death or anything. And they, the only thing they said to me about what's coming is they said humans can't end the world, they don't have the power. Yeah. And then they said that, um, that my children's children's children will have a different reality from me. And that there's a choice coming, something that humans don't have in their current reality right now. Beautiful. Yeah, I remember That's you perfect. mentioned that last time, and you just posted that on the internet. And yeah. you, you just for people, you you are on Facebook, correct? And you're posting under your name on Facebook. I've been posting under my name on Facebook. Yeah, and and even that, I sort of thought, do I want my face up? Do I not? Want? It, it's 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 all new to me. It's just that the drive to share outweighs anything else. Yeah. So, well, you're doing a good job of it. You're doing a good job of it. So I just for people I, to know there. I don't want to be offensive because I can't explain everything. Yeah, you can only put out what you've got. I mean, I think you post almost every day with something, but I, I think it's very, very sort of uh, sort of wise advice that that I read from you almost every day. That's all you can really do is sort of like light your little corner of the world. You, and take it lightly as well. I try yeah. to keep it light because um, – it's it, we've forgotten they said you know you if, i remember when they first came down and i know everybody's evolving now into uh, uh and i think we're going to go in the future we're all going to sort of sort of go vegan i can see that happening because i can see animals evolving in consciousness as well and i did say to my sister i think animals are going to really evolve in consciousness as, as humans evolve i think we're going to sort of evolve at the same time mm -hmm. and she thought or she said, is it that we've been deaf to animals and they've always been more evolved than us and now we're catching up with them? <laughs> and I had to take her back and I said, you know what, that come on straight down. <laughs> I said, that one came straight down from the beans. Yes, you're probably <laughs> quite right. Yeah. So uh, this one, and um, so there's going to be loads of changes. You can see it happening already. People are talking, I mean, we've always talked to animals, but it, it's going to be on another level now. And, and, but when they first came, I remember them sitting down, the first conversation they had with uh, Zoe and I, and they said, when they sort of introduced themselves after they said, you know, haven't you had enough yet? And, uh, and then they said other things. They said, um, you know, you, I, I don't, I didn't eat meat there. I've always never ate meat, but okay. I, I, I didn't think anything of it. I just don't, don't want it, didn't want to eat meat. So they sort of said, you know, Annette doesn't eat meat, you eat meat. Um, I smoke cigarettes. Uh, Annette smokes cigarettes, you don't smoke. You know, Annette doesn't drink, you have a drink. Oh, it wasn't, you know, you don't drink. They said it's personal, it's you, you, it, there's no wrong or right. You know, it's moderation. You've been given this to experience these realities and you beat yourself up all the way through it. Wow. And, and, you know, but it's been given to you for your call. It's what you want to do. It, it's an experience and that's all it is. It's an experience of emotion. And, and that was a big point for me because that really made me think you can't judge people. You can't judge people on what they want to do and what they not want to do because we're going to be all right. At the moment we're in this phase where there's a lot of things that we can say are not very nice going on as much as they said to me, you know, view negative and positive. I'm still human. I'm still, you know, a nan, a mom. I still have a big heart and I still don't like seeing things that get hurt or pain. Mm -hmm. So, but I realize what they mean by, they mean that as an energy, as oneness, we've actually all wanted to experience this. That's why we're all experienced it and we all have experienced it, but that is changing. And they said that, you know, they said, it's not just humans that want to change to this current reality. They went, all beings want to change. We've all, we've all had enough. Everybody's had enough. All beings have had enough. Humans have had enough. It, it's change and that's why it's come in and it's changed and they said they're going to be more uh, uh, energies uh, interacting uh, in this reality with other beings and that's how the shift is going to come and, and it's happening it's happening a lot and it's always happens it's always been happening but we're going to see more of it and then it will be more and more and more and more and more. And we're going to get to the point because they did say there's going to be a time when other beings are going to be walking, you know, physically around in our realities. So that's the time. It's happened before plenty of times. It's going to happen again, again. Um, this picture is about how we're all one. But, you know, your contracts are your contracts. We're all one. We're all responsible. 
um, and then and to find the happiness within that if you can and then this bit in the middle was the fact that it's always it's like your gut instinct is your self soul if you like your energy in form which is trying to feed you like um, like a like almost a trail of crumbs yep. for yourself to follow in this illusion and that was china in that picture there wow you are very well spoken about this i'm very impressed i mean you only from them and yeah. as I'm speaking to you, because I'm dyslexic, <laughs> and I just tell you what's happening. As I speak to you, each word is getting flashed in front of my eyes, as I and I'm looking at it in mind, and then it's coming out my mouth. Wow. That's how it is. That's how it operates. Wow. So I'm getting a word. I can literally see a word, or in some stages, I can see a whole sentence they've given me in the past, and it will just flash up straight in front of my whatever, straight in front of my inside head, my mind, my thought. And I read from that. It's like I'm reading from that. This picture here was when they were describing Tron because they called themselves Tron, yep. C H O N, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, because they said it's the building blocks of all matter uh, of humans, other beings, plants, trees, everything, everything. And they and then it, and they kind of and then they said with their drip feeding and everything, I sort of give this picture as as all the babies because they said humans are no different to plants. You know, you're just a big garden to us, and it really made me laugh. And I just, I just had this vision of like all us little humans as flowers, getting watered. <laughs> wow. and, that's that. and you have posted under Chan, don't, don't you have um, a, a, a message site there or a Facebook? Yeah. So when the beings first arrived, after about two weeks, it was it was quite overwhelming. All the information that was given us, and I just couldn't stop. I said, honestly, I think we should share this. I said, I, maybe no do listen or maybe one person will listen, but I can't contain it. I felt like I was going to explode. I said, I can't contain it. I feel like I have to share it. So I said, so do you, do you think we should open a Facebook page? And she said, I'll ask the beans. This is at the beginning as I go in the first three months where everything was sort of channeled through Zoe. I didn't, they did speak to me, but I, I would always confirm because they were there and I could. Okay. that i was getting the right message and i was you know am i feeling this is this what you're saying to me and i'd get confirmation or sometimes i'd say no it's this but um the uh the uh well i can't remember what i was saying now it's gone are you about posting this stuff you asked oh them. yes so we opened a facebook page just to and they actually zoe said if we open a facebook page because it's not coming, she actually got a little nervous because she said, remember, I'm not writing these messages. They're getting channeled to me. What if someone writes a message in and the beings don't turn up to answer it? And I remember thinking, oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I was going, oh, you know, I don't know. I said, ask the beings if they are prepared to do it. So she asked the beings. And that's when they actually said I'd opened a portal and that they were prepared to do it. And, um, and then what happened then is that, they would give like little short just little short little statements and it would say from the beings uh maybe like uh there's quite a few up there they i think they posted about nine times and then uh from their words literally and what that time was happening was zoe was having to obviously they're channeling it to her and then she would have to physically write it out so she was exhausted she was always exhausted the amount of writing that she was channeling um for that intensity of the first three months so they we got a lot of messages out there on that page and it's called tron oneness because they they didn't call themselves anything they didn't say oh we are god or they didn't say we are the beings they when we called them the beings and then they explained that everything was carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and they said they gave us the word chon and it's not t it's just the way i'm pronouncing it it's c yep. c a o n yeah and then after that in conversations they would call themselves tron they would say you know tron tron says to humans blah 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 so they took on that energy um to talk to us but it did they did have make little subtleties that used to make me laugh they would say like does they would always say uh does humans know you know, like it was almost like their own street language. It would, they came <laughs> sort of the way they gave the words. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. So really, yeah, this is us being flowers. Wow. Just growing. 
Okay, we run up against our time. We'll do another one. We'll do some of the other ones later. Right. Um, yeah. I, 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 I want to, again, thank you, because, I mean, your material is some of the best I've seen, and you're so well-spoken in, in putting this message out. I, do you feel honored to be part of this sort of, this uh, sort of, you're becoming a little more popular in terms of people knowing who you are? Uh, I don't know if honor's the right word. I yeah. feel, I'm still like i don't know i'm still a, i'm still in in some other area of energy at the moment um i feel gobsmacked yeah. and i get a, I'm more i'm very humble i think because i just think wow i can't every day i say wow i can't believe it wow i can't believe it but they did say that you've cho you know they did, they did keep saying to me don't be ashamed of what you're experiencing in the now and and sometimes I share and then sometimes I go quiet because I feel like it's almost like I think, oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? <laughs> and then and then share again. And it's been like that since they came, to be truthful. It's been like it's not been an easy peasy, oh, you know, this is a wonderful experience. It's been an up and down absolute roller coaster, and that's the only way to describe it. One day I'm thinking, oh, I'm sharing everything and I, I'm so happy I'm sharing. The next thing can I, next day I'm thinking, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, what am I doing? And it's been sort of, but the only thing I can say is each, I'm growing. So the times when I'm saying, oh, what am I doing is less Beautiful. than the times when I'm saying, no, I'm just sharing this. It's my reality and um, I'm just doing it. I'm just sharing what, and, and, you know, you did give me some good advice when in one of your emails that you sent me and you kind of said, you know, I can imagine, and I've often thought this, I used to, sometimes I'm talking and I'm saying, I'm really trying to do this for you, like, but, you know, it's quite hard down here and uh, I'm doing the best and, um, you know, I'm, I'm on it. But, but then I get a feeling like I don't have to do anything if I don't want to do it. And none of us have to do, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's your choice. I remember if I said to them, is there certain things that I have to do? And they, one of the things they said to me was, you just got to learn to love yourself. And I thought, oh, okay, oh, okay that's, that's a nice message to learn. That's a nice one. It was, and, and I, so every time I think, am I doing too much? Um, I, should I be doing this? I just think, do you want to do it? Because you don't have to do it. And I think, no, I don't have to do it. No, you're right. I don't have to do any of it. So I must want to do it. So I'm, you know, I, I'm still very much in it grant at the moment and i'm 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 becoming absolutely blown away because as the beings left in when they left in that form as the we were experiencing in it and it morphed into something else at the end of january 2018 um they actually said we're going now to visit other humans because we're all, you know, in, and not maybe them per se in three little forms like that. In all their forms, yeah. they're going to, you know, reality with humans because we need it for this shift that we're going to. So, yeah, they're busy. They're very busy. And I say that it, I felt like they really were trying to impose that they don't want this old image uh, of being horrible. And they want a new image of a love, a love and sharing. So it'd be really nice, really, if some um, sci-fi writers, which you will see soon, will start writing. You won't get these, uh, oh, you know, the aliens and the predators and all yeah. the blood and gore. You're not going to see that soon. You're going to see much more uh, thinking, dimensional, nice things, yeah. nice nice messages, helping messages. You're going to see that morph come in because that's how they'll do this shift. So I, I, I fr firmly agree with the message that they're putting out that you're putting out. And I appreciate that you did it, that you went out publicly. And uh, just for the record, I will do whatever I can to oh, you, support your message. Because for everything that you said, I can find 10 experiencers who said the same thing. This is the message that's coming through. So whatever I can do to help you, let me know. And let's uh, just keep going and um, stay in touch and i'm going to do another one shortly with you to go through some more stuff because i'm i'm very impressed with with what you're there's doing some, so. there's quite a lot on self-healing as well so maybe in the next one we can do okay. a bit on uh, self-healing okay beautiful i'll shut it down for now and we'll talk a little bit off record here so let Bye. me hang on let me see if i can turn this thing off here oh, here we go